How many people do you know who have had diseases like diphtheria, tetanus, polio, measles, mumps, or smallpox? If you live in the developed world, you probably don't know very many, which is a good thing, because those diseases are not only unpleasant, but potentially very deadly. And the reason that they are rather rare, if not eradicated entirely in the case of smallpox, is because of vaccines and the power of herd immunity. But what is herd immunity? And how do vaccines figure into it? Let's answer these questions using gummy bears. The very simplest epidemiological model, the SIR model, makes use of three categories. Susceptible, the white gummy bears. Infected, the red gummy bears. And recovered, the green gummy bears. Susceptible bears can get the disease. Infected bears have the disease and can transmit it to susceptible bears. And recovered bears have had the disease so they can't get it again or transmit it to other bears. So here's our model. We have a population of white susceptible gummy bears, and we introduce an infectious disease. It spreads through the population of susceptible bears and infects them, turning them red. Some bears will die of the disease and disappear from the population, but the ones that don't will develop immunity and move into the green, recovered category. The green, recovered gummy bears are important because in addition to perpetuating the gummy bear population, they're able to interact with the red, infected bears without any risk of becoming infected themselves. Assuming that all the gummy bears in our population are going to interact with a certain number of other bears one way or another, it's better for the overall population for red bears to interact with green bears rather than white bears, since the white bears are susceptible and the green bears aren't. As the number of green bears in the population increases, the chances of a red bear meeting a white bear go down until there aren't enough white bears left to sustain the disease in the population. Vaccines are really useful because they allow us to increase the number of green bears in the population without anyone having to be infected first. We can move them straight from the white susceptible category into the green, recovered or immune category. No infection necessary. And if we can vaccinate a large enough proportion of the population, then we can prevent the disease from ever taking hold in the first place. And even the susceptible white bears will be protected from the disease, simply because they will never encounter it. The protection that a high number of vaccinated green bears provides to the small number of susceptible white bears is called herd immunity. Simply put, if enough of your herd is immune to a disease, it's unlikely that you'll get it, even if a few people get sick, simply because infectious individuals are unlikely to encounter susceptible individuals. This is why vaccines are important for public health, and why we don't see many cases of measles, mumps, polio, or smallpox anymore. 